three, two, one. Good morning and welcome to Sunday School. This is our study of the International Sunday School lesson and we are so excited that you have logged on to study the Word of the Lord with us on today. Uh, the RH Boyd Corporation who supplies our Sunday School materials is actually celebrating 125 years and so we want to give honor to them and thank them for the resources that they provide for the study of God's Word. Today is Sunday, January the 17th and we've got a great lesson coming up. The title is healing for the whole person. Sister Linda Williams and Deacon Tyrone Thurman is going to be teaching the lesson and so this is what I need for you to do. Go ahead, get your Bible, get your notepad. Uh, you might want to open up your notes tab on your phone or your computer. Um, and then also you can go to our website, ambcchicago.org, and you can get the full outline of today's lesson. So I hope you're ready to study God's word. It is indeed going to be powerful and you are going to be blessed. Like, comment, and share this video so we can share the word of the Lord with others. Let's go into the study of the International Sunday School lesson right now. Good morning. Welcome to another adventure in the Sunday School lesson. Our lesson this week comes from Lesson 3 from January 17, 2021, Healing for the Whole Person. By the way, Happy New Year's. I hope you had a blessed holiday season. Our presenters today will be Sister Linda Williams and myself, Brother Tyrone Terman. And let's have a word of prayer. Our Father, our God, we thank you for all that you've done, Father God. We ask you to forgive us of our sins and trespasses. Forgive those who trespass against us. And Father God, we ask you to bless every household that's tuned in, that might be watching or listening, or Oh, Father God, to this presentation, oh, Father God, give them the desire to study your word, Father God. We'll work with not to be ashamed. We thank you for every church that's open in your name, Father God. We ask you to strengthen those that, are, that follow the faith, and we ask you to touch the hearts of those who don't believe yet. Father God, we know all power is in your hand. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Now, Sister William. All right, good morning, uh, Sunday, uh, Antioch family and friends. Um, I hope you uh, had a great holiday season. Uh, like Deacon Turman has just stated that our lesson today is, uh, the topic is healing for the whole person. Our lesson is coming from the Gospel of Mark. Uh, the Gospel of Mark is sort of like a fast paced uh, gospel, uh, wouldn't you say, uh, Deacon Terman? Uh, yes. Mark, he skips over the genealogy of, of Christ, the birth of Christ. He skips over the um, religious uh, background mm -hmm. information uh, that normally would attract a Jewish audience because he's speaking to a Gentile audience. Mm -hmm. And so he mainly jumps from the uh, baptism uh, by John the Baptist, mm -hmm. uh, he takes us from there to his uh, Jesus uh, um, temptation mm -hmm. in the wilderness. And then he places us right into the heart of his ministry. So uh, he presents Jesus as a servant. And so as a servant, he is presenting uh, his ministry in action. And so as we look at our lesson today, we will be looking at it from a different perspective as our last uh, lesson was coming from mm -hmm. the book of Luke. So we are going to begin by looking at our unifying topic, our lesson text, and our main thought, and our unifying principle. And Deacon Terman, will you um, uh, give us that information, please? The unifying topic, call to heal, the main thought, well, it is easier to say to the sick of the palsy, thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, arise, and take up thy bed and walk. Mark 2 and 9. The unifying principle. The limitation of human existence makes genuine wholeness an elusive goal. Where can we find healing? By declaring a paralyzed man's sins forgiven and restoring his physical health, Jesus demonstrated that God had called Jesus to heal infirmity informalities of the soul as well as the body. The lesson aim to learn that Jesus approaches healing from a holistic vantage point. Life aim to live in the wholeness that can only be offered in Christ. All right, as we get into our lesson, uh, in the student book, they have an interesting uh, introduction. And let me uh, begin by reading that for you. 
It says, America is sick and in need of healing. In addition to being infected with COVID-19, our country has been infested with the disease of racism since its inception. Sadly, we know of no other world where racism does not exist. Like Jeremiah, who asked of God, is there no bomb in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is there no recovery? Many also inquire, what could truly heal us of this, mal of this malady? And I think that speaks to our unifying principle because as you just read, it says the limitations of human existence makes genuine wholeness an elusive goal. And we all want to be whole. We yeah. all want healing. Uh, but sometimes our concept of what healing and wholeness is, mm -hmm. is misconstrued. And we, uh, we are looking at it from a different perspective mm -hmm. than what Jesus himself is uh, looking at it from. And so because of that, we ask the question, mm -hmm. what is wholeness? And how do we get it? How is it attained? And I think this lesson that we're about to study today speaks to that question exactly what wholeness is and how we can get it. Uh, first of all, um, uh, we're going to look at our first set of scriptures, which are coming from Mark 2, uh, verses 1 through 5. And uh, Deacon uh, Terman, will you read those verses for us, please? Okay, uh, reading from the King James, verse 1. And again, he entered the Capernaum, and after some days, it, it was noise that he was in the house. And straight away, many had gathered together, in so much there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. Verse 3. And they came into him, bringing some sick of the palsy, which were born of four. And when they could no, come not nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. When they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. All right, so we're jumping right into it. But I want to take you back uh, before we get into this uh, a little bit. Um, Jesus' ministry began in Galilee. Mm -hmm. We're talking about his Galilean mm -hmm. ministry. And in that ministry, uh, Jesus began his ministry right after John the Baptist mm -hmm. was put in prison. So he begins to go about his ministry in Galilee. And in Galilee, he is healing, he's preaching, and he's teaching. His main focus is not the healing, but his main focus is the preaching because that is why he was sent. He was sent here for reconciliation. He was sent here by God the Father to reconcile man back to God. So there was a brokenness there. And so our journey toward healing first begins with our brokenness in our relationship with God the Father. And so Jesus comes and he begins by healing. Well, in the first chapter of Mark, Jesus begins his healing ministry and this is drawing a lot of people to him because they have never seen anything like that. And his teaching was so revolutionary that it was just something about his, the way he taught. They knew that it was different because of scribes and the Pharisees did not teach in that same way. So he was drawing crowds, but the miracles that he was doing, the healing that he was doing, we know that the first uh, miracle was the changing the water to wine at the Canaan uh, wedding that he went to with his mother. And from there he began to heal uh, various people and he began to teach about the kingdom of heaven was at hand. And so people really got wrapped up into the healing ministry because there were so many people in that day and time who were sick and uh, they needed healing. Mm. I mean, there were infirmities and these things were important. Even today, we focus on, on health and healing mm. because we know that if, we, if our body is whole, mm. then there are a lot of things that that will allow us to do it makes help us make a living it helps us to go to and forth and and meet and greet other people and interact with other people so 
physical formality is, is um, something that is at the heart of every human desire. We all want to be made whole. And so uh, Jesus began by healing. And I think at the end of chapter one, he healed a, bl a blind man mm -hmm. in the synagogue mm -hmm. where he was preaching. And so it was so revolutionary that uh, people were beginning to talk about it. But Jesus told the blind man uh, to go and wash and show himself to the priest mm -hmm. and that let them, you know, uh, um, yeah. examine yeah. him and not to tell anyone. But naturally, when you get healed of something or, or you set free from something, the first thing you want to do is share the information. And so this is what he does. He goes about sharing the information of how Jesus, this man from Nazareth, has healed him and restored his sight. And so that news spread all around Galilee. And so at the time he was in um, Nazareth, mm -hmm. Or, or Capernaum. Mm -hmm. He was in Capernaum mm -hmm. when this took place. So he had to leave because he couldn't minister to the people. He couldn't m minister the message of the kingdom of God being at hand because of, of the news about the healing that took mm -hmm. forth. So he decided that it was time to leave Capernaum for a little while and go into another part of Galilee uh, where he could uh, begin to teach and preach uh, there. And then after that little length of time, it may have been um, a year or, or a year and a half, he comes back to Capernaum. And so when he comes back to Capernaum, he enters into the house. Now the scripture just says the house, mm -hmm. but uh, a lot of commentators believe that this was Peter's house mm -hmm. and not Jesus' house mm -hmm. because uh, Jesus, it was said in the gospels that he had nowhere no to lay his head. So they're assuming that the house that he was in was Peter's house because Peter and, and, and um, Andrew mm -hmm. were brothers mm -hmm. and they lived there with his mother and his wife. And uh, prior to that, Jesus had already healed his mm -hmm. mother. And so he comes back. Capernaum was his home base. That was where he, he uh, began his ministry and that was where he, came, he would come back to from time to time. But it didn't take long for the people to hear, oh, Jesus is here. He's here. So everybody wanted to come out and everybody wanted to see Jesus. They was more um, there for as thrill seekers than really to hear the message of God. They were more concerned about the miracles he could do than hear the message uh, in Nazareth and in Capernaum. And, and, and Jesus later on mentioned that, that um, Sodom and Gomorrah, the message that he gave there mm -hmm. was heard there, that they would be uh, uh, in a better place of, of receiving it than the people in uh, Capernaum because they had no clue as to the message. Their interest was not in, in the message that Jesus was giving. Mm -hmm. Their interest mainly in this town was the healing, the, the miracles. They came there as sight seekers, thrill seekers to see what, what they can. And so uh, not only were they there, but uh, the people came, but we know that in that crowd was the scribes. They came also to see just what would take place, just what Jesus would do. And in this uh, uh, lesson, we're going to find the first uh, confrontation that Jesus is going to encounter, uh, which will let him know what he will be encountering throughout his ministry while he's here on earth. So as he comes there, we see in, in our first five verses that there are five people who specifically wanted to see Jesus. That was the man who was uh, with the palsy who on the was bed. on the stretcher and there was his four friends. And so when they got there, it was so many people in the house that they could not get in. And so uh, I, I want to also mention that uh, the, uh, in that day and time, hospitality, the doors of the house was, was kind of different than they are today. Today, you, uh, you don't see many people's doors open. 
uh, <laughs> so that you, anybody you can't get them over with a key. <laughs> That's right. You know, we live in a different era and a different time. But in that day and time, people kept their doors open. So it was easy access to go in and out of the house. The only time the door was closed was when they wanted some privacy. So for the most part, doors were open. And so if we see in this setting, the doors were open. A lot of people were coming in. And so it got to a point where it, the house was packed and then they were outside the house. So by the time these five men get there, they can't get in because of the crowd and nobody's letting them in. Everybody wants to take care of what they want to take care of. And they were thinking about themselves and they didn't let them in. So they decided, well, we're going to go in another way. We're going to go in because in that day and time, houses were made differently. Mm -hmm. They had a roof, a flat roof. Mm -hmm. And so um, the access to that roof was a set of stairways mm -hmm. next to uh, the house mm -hmm. so that you can go up on the roof. It's sort of like our deck in our day and age today. But the roof was made of um, wooden beams laying across it and then leaves on top and they were saying mud and thatch. I'm not sure what thatch is. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, Deacon Terman, are you familiar with that term? No. But it had all that and mud and then the tile. So uh, it was a, quite a bit of, of, of material. material on pack, but it was used to keep out the rain. Uh, it wasn't made like our roofs today. And so since the men couldn't get in the building, they said, we're going to go up on the roof. And then they decided that they're going to tear a hole in the roof and lower the man down into the place where Jesus was speaking. And so um, they go in and they tear up the roof. Now, this was not an easy job. I mean, it took a lot of faith in the first place to believe that uh, that Jesus would be receptive to them to go through that trouble that they went through. And, and it wasn't even their house. It was Peter's house. So they went through a lot. This shows the faith, not only of the four men, but the faith of the man, I know, uh, of the paralytic, because he had to believe that these men could get them to Jesus. And they had to have faith that Jesus was able to do something about their situation. I think they came all that way carrying him because they had their faith drove them to that. And I'm not sure if they instituted that faith or the man in the bed said, take me to Jesus, whatever it is. And whether they were close friends or not, I don't know if he offered to pay them, but whatever it was, they obliged and took him to Jesus, the one who he heard about who could help him. Yes, yes. And, and, and that speaks to what we need to be doing. We need to bring people to Christ. Mm -hmm. And, and so their actions uh, lets us know that there are people who the only way they're going to receive Christ, the only way they're going to hear about Christ or know about Christ is if they are brought. Right. Um, this man, this paralytic may have known, I'm pretty sure if it was noise about it, even though he couldn't walk, news traveled by mouth. Yeah. And so he heard something. He heard about a man who was healing. He heard about all the other healings that Jesus had been doing because at that time he had healed uh, many people. He had healed the blind man uh, not too long ago. So uh, his healing, the miracles that he was doing with the water and wine, these are the things that drew people to Christ. These are the things that made them want to seek him out because they were curious. You know, they were uh, in need of something and they felt like he was the one who could meet that need and so uh, we see that um, That this is what was going on and it says in the fifth verse that when Jesus saw their faith He said unto the sick of the palsy son thy sins be forgiven thee Wow, this was like, you know, we come here for one thing But he's telling us something else he tied it. He tied the two together. I think when you, when you did your introduction, wholeness. Mm -hmm. A lot of people can go to the doctor, get treatment, and 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 they and, they, and their symptoms are kind of subsided, but still on the inside. And I think the lessons and the prelude to the lesson talks about the inside of person still has some scar tissues on it. Yeah. Still has some worries. Still has some frustrations on the inside of person. How did I get like this? Why is this happening to me? And those things don't go away with a prescription. 
Those take time. But Jesus was saying to the man, listen, your physical limitations are going, I'm going to make you well from the inside out. Right. And that's what he was saying. And I can imagine uh, the house owner saying, wait a minute, who's up there tearing in my room? <laughs> you better get up from that. <laughs> you better get up there. You ain't got no insurance. You're right. But, but Jesus made everything okay. Yes. And that's what it, you know, that's what it is. He makes everything okay. No matter what trouble we go through, he makes it worthwhile. He saw that those men, I don't know how long that, where they lived at, how far they had to carry that man, and they came up the roof. You know, somebody said, uh-uh, I ain't going up there. I ain't carrying this bed up there. But they, went, they got together, the four of them got together for their friend and took him up on the roof and did what you said. Tore up that roof and let him down, I guess rope or cord, let the bed down in the midst of Jesus. And Jesus looked at him and said, well, these guys must have something on their mind. <laughs> they go yeah. through all that trouble. Right. And that's what Jesus honored. The one that extra effort to get to him, the woman with the issue, pressed away. And now this man, they talked about the, the leopard sitting on the highway, calling out his name. So Jesus honors the extra effort to get to him. And that's what he rewards. And so we just take him for granted that Jesus is going to come out. We have to make an extra effort. Those winter days when the bed feels good and you got some oatmeal on and bacon frying, <laughs> you, you, you have to put that down and make an extra effort to get to hear the word. Yes, yes. And, and, and faith is an action word. And so um, it says that when he saw their faith, because he saw that they were doing, they were going, like you said, the extra mile. They were doing what it takes to exercise what they believe. They knew that he had the answer to what the problem was that this man had, but they also didn't know how deep the problem is. And a lot of times we look on the outward and we forget that there is a connection. Jesus came to reconcile us back to God mm -hmm. the Father. And so in order for us to be whole, our spiritual man mm -hmm. has to be healed mm -hmm. as well as our physical mm -hmm. man. And so Jesus knew that the real issue the was, was the inside, was the spiritual mm -hmm. issue, that our spiritual life matters even more than our physical life. Right. And so <laughs> if we get the first thing first, then we can uh, have that wholeness that we need. Our body, mind, and spirit all need to be healed. Mm -hmm. And we are living in a day and time uh, where uh, we see that more than ever before. Um, uh, as the introduction in the student book said, uh, well, as we look at today, we look at the things that we went through last year. Mm -hmm. And it kind of brings into focus that the physical and the spiritual needs need to be met, mm -hmm. need to be healed, mm -hmm. need to be mended. And that's what wholeness is. Mm -hmm. It's a healing. Mm -hmm. That's what salvation mm -hmm. is. The word salvation mm -hmm. is more mm -hmm. than, than uh, being, um, um, having uh, been saved from sin. Mm -hmm. It's more than uh, um, eternal life. Mm -hmm. It's also a wholeness, a reconciliation. We have to mend what is broken before we can achieve those ends. Uh, we have to mend our relationship between God the Father. And that's what Jesus' ministry was all about. That's why he was telling them the kingdom was at hand, because he came to reconcile man back to God. He said in John 10.10, uh, 10, that the thief cometh not but to steal and kill and destroy, but I have come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Abundant life is not necessarily about material things. Abundant life is about a whole complete life. And the only way we can have a whole complete life is if our spiritual life as well as our physical life is all in line mm -hmm. with one is, 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 is dependent on the other. Mm -hmm. We can't separate the two. And so um, in this book by um, uh, Kenneth L. Bacon, he is a, a, a doctor who uh, works at uh, St. Um, uh, Luke's Hospital in, um, and he works in uh, Bellevue, Washington. Uh, he is a physician uh, who, uh, 
His ministry is more than just medical. It's also about his religion. Um, he says we all encounter times of physical illness as well as emotional, psychological, mm. and spiritual distress and pain. We are all in need of healing in every aspect of our life. And so when we think about that, we have to think of the total man needs to be made whole. Mm. It's not just our physical infirmities. It's not just our emotional problems, mm -hmm. but we need to con reconnect spiritually mm -hmm. with our maker, mm -hmm. our creator, our Lord, our savior. Mm -hmm. We need to reconnect and mend that relationship mm -hmm. in order for us to experience wholeness. Mm -hmm. And so he <clears throat> says, God brings us health in many forms, but until we are touched by the reality of the spirit, mm -hmm. we cannot be truly whole. Our spiritual life then becomes a key determining factor in our journey toward wholeness. And so that, that is, when I thought about that, I, I thought about this lesson. Mm -hmm. And I thought about, this is the message that this lesson is trying to get us to see. That we're on a spiritual journey mm -hmm. toward wholeness. Mm -hmm. And it begins first with our spirit man. And then it extends out to our physical being. And so until we get all of that, in focus, we cannot truly behold. Right, and you know, Jesus always approached uh, the people with the word, because he, like you said, he was sent to preach to people, to tell them that the kingdom of God was at hand. I mean, they were under Roman rule and, and held by many, uh, in and out of uh, captivity many times in, in their civilization. So he came to set them free in a way that they would only be free, and your mind is set free, then you're free, you feel free. You know, even if you come from the doctor, like you said, healing, physical healing, you still have, might have some mental issues. Mm -hmm. But when you're brought to know where God is and what your relationship with God is, you can grow in that. You can live with a little back pain. You can live with a, uh, a bad foot. You can live with those things because you know who your maker is. Right. And you feel better because sometimes you go to the doctor and go to the doctor and so say, I got to go in for another treatment. How long you been going? But these men went to Jesus and the Jesus, I never seen Jesus say, follow up with somebody. Right. <laughs> check, check back in with me. Yeah. He, did, he did it right there and completely. And, when they, and that's why the beauty of Jesus. But he fed them that were hungry. He healed them that were sick. To show that God cares about the old man. But listen to the message. Listen to the message. I don't know how many, the Bible doesn't record how many people turn around and continue to be disciples of Jesus or follow Jesus after the healing. But Jesus was there for the people. He said, God sent me. God knew all about the body. So I'm going to show you that I have the power of God within me to heal this body, this broken body. And so he did that. And, but I always added in thy sins, yeah. thy sins, thy sins. It will be given you because that was the issue that he was dealing with. Mankind's lust for different stuff. They're going to make me better, make me feel better, make me do this. And, and you, you, if you look at TV now, there's so much uh, uh, medicine, prescription drugs, so many ointments that make you look younger and feel better and restore your hair and all this. But what about the inside? Right. What right. about the inside? How, yes. about, how about your relationship, even with your parents, with, with your sibling, with your neighbor, on your job? Those relationships that God cares about. Right. And, and that's because, you know, we uh, look at health and healing from a, a medicinal perspective. Mm -hmm. We look to medicine mm -hmm. to remedy the things that we think that we need. But like you said, Jesus is the real remedy mm -hmm. for whatever we need. Uh, we have to first uh, uh, look at the source. Like you said, he never said, follow back up with mm -hmm. me. So uh, uh, in order to experience our, our, our health and well-being, we need a healthy relationship mm -hmm. with our maker. Right. And, and uh, physical infirmities, we may have to live with some sometimes. Like there may Paul. be some things, but <laughs> It will not stop us from being whole. Uh, wholeness uh, is a broad term, and, and, and it, it, it's more than just the physical. And I think this is what the heart of our lesson is trying to get us to look at. But even with a message like that, there's opposition. And so we're going to go to our next outline, um, uh, verses uh, 6 through 12. Verse 6, but there was a certain other scribe sitting there and reasoning within their hearts. Why thou this man speak blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God only? Verse eight, and immediately when Jesus perceived within his spirit that they so reasoned within themselves, he said unto them, 
Why reason ye these things in your hearts? Verse 9, whether it be easier to say to the sick of palsy, thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, arise, and take up thy bed, and walk. But when ye may know that the Son of God hath power on earth to forgive sin, he said to the sick of the palsy. Verse 11, I say unto thee, arise, and take up thy bed, and go thy way unto thine house. Verse 12, and immediately he arose, took up the bed, and went forth before them all, insomuch as they were all amazed, and glorified God, saying, we never saw it on this fashion. <laughs> <laughs> so when we get here, you know, it, it, if we look at these verses, it, 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 it takes us right to the people, the scribes, the Pharisees. They were the ones who transcribed the law. And they were the theologians of the day. You know, they, um, the Pharisees and the Sadducees both sex had mm -hmm. scribes. Mm -hmm. So the scribes were the ones who knew more about the written and the oral mm -hmm. law than the Sadducees mm -hmm. and the Pharisees. And so they, we don't know whose uh, scribes these were. Mm -hmm. We don't know if it was from the Pharisees or from the Sadducees, but all of them were looking to trip Jesus mm -hmm. up. But it's interesting, you know, they were thinking, mm -hmm. who can say, mm -hmm. you know, who can say, uh, um, uh, thy, sin. thy sins be forgiven you. Who has the authority? Man does not have the authority. And interestingly enough, it would, you would think that it would surprise them that Jesus knew exactly what they were thinking. He knew exactly what was in their heart. He voiced it and they had not said it openly. They were thinking these things. So that should have told them something right then and there that this no ordinary man. He's able to read my thoughts. He knows what's in my heart before I even speak it. He knows. And so he says, why do you reason which is easier to say? It's interesting. He didn't say which is easier to do. It's easier to say both, actually. But what can you prove is what he's trying to get them to see. I can say thy sins be forgiven me, but you can't see that. You can't see my sins being forgiven, mm -hmm. you know, and, and but what you can mm -hmm. see, and he knows that. And so he tells him, but what you can see is if I say, uh, arise, get up and walk. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, if he does not get up and walk, then I don't have any power and I don't have any authority. Uh, for, uh, and, and so what I'm doing and what I'm saying is nothing. But if I say, Thy sins be forgiven thee. And then I tell you, arise, get up and walk, and he get up and walk. Then I must have power, and I must have authority, and I must be sent by God the Father to do these things. You know, when they were looking in Scripture, they never looked for that kind of, of, of thing to take place. They weren't looking for it. They viewed him as an ordinary man, but they did not want to admit, and they did not want to to uh, come to the realization that he is more than just a mere man. And so, um, so he asked them, he questions them, you know. Uh, yes, we know that blasphemy is a serious offense mm -hmm. in that day and time. Mm -hmm. and, and to blaspheme against the holy, uh, 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 holy God, we know that they knew that only God mm -hmm. could uh, uh, forgive sins, mm -hmm. you know. So the question in and of itself basically mm -hmm. was not, you know, bad, but mm -hmm. it was, but Jesus knew the heart of the man. He knew that no matter what he did, it Any would question? not make a difference to what they had already preconceived in their mind. And so he shows them. He says, I say unto thee, arise and take up thy bed and go thy w unto thy house. And what happened? The 12th verse says immediately this man got up and he was able to walk and walk away. Jesus proved right then and there that he not only had the power, but he had the authority mm -hmm. to do both, forgive sins and get up and walk. Because a man couldn't get up and walk and couldn't be made whole if his sins had not been forgiven him. And what sin really is, he's saying that you're separated from the God, mm -hmm. the Father. That's the ultimate sin mm -hmm. that we face as humans, mm -hmm. our separation. Until we come to Christ, until we accept the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of our sins, mm -hmm. 
then we can't experience the wholeness that this man had experienced. Not only he got extra benefit, mm. not only was his sins forgiven him, but he was able to rise and get up and walk. We can rise and get up and walk above mm. our situations that uh, have kept us in bondage, mm. uh, whether uh, 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 we know it mm. or not mm. until, you know, um, uh, when we accept Christ as our savior, mm. then we can rise above the sin that has kept us uh, uh, entrenched and in bondage and separated from God the Father because that's the ultimate thing that uh, we need to mend, our separation. And so the benefit that this man received here was just to let us know that Jesus has the authority to mend our situations and make us whole. And again, the, the faith of that man to sit there and be carried and then taken up to the roof and be lowered down before the Savior shows his commitment to be healed. And Jesus rewarded that commitment. And I'm sure his four friends that didn't record what they did. Yes. Look yes. back and say, oh, man, we have to carry this no more. <laughs> but, but again, as you said, he got a double reward. His relationship was mended. Right. It doesn't say if we carry it out or whatever. But he was told at that time his relationship with God was restored. His body, his strength was restored so he could get up and walk again. Yes. Many of us can walk and run and jump and do a lot of stuff, but our relationship with God is raggedy. Right. It, right. it is totally raggedy. And maybe because we don't have aches and pains, we don't consider God. Maybe because we think we're whole when we're really broken, we don't consider God. You know, right. we can have a, you know, some people say, well, I don't go to church. I don't need anything. Mm -hmm. uh, I, you know, I got a good job. My kids are okay. And, my parents are okay, and I got, you know, bonuses and stuff like that, and I'm doing okay. I had a physical. But your relationship with God, you're kind of on other things to keep you content and whatever. Right. But you're not whole on the inside. Right. Because we don't, if we don't start thinking about God being the whole of everything. I mean, he's the temple. These are just temporary buildings that we're in. Exactly. And the things that we have are only temporary because we can only use them for so long, and then they have to be replaced. But God gives us ministry through his word that, yeah, this, you have this stuff now, but it really belongs to me. You just do it over. Yes. And your body, you should take care of these bodies because they're going to fade away faster than you realize. Yes. And that's what Jesus was telling these people. Yes. You know, hey, I can come heal you right now and, and it'll last until you, you get another problem. But then you have to trust God because what did he tell uh, Paul? He had a, a problem with his back. Yes. My grace is sufficient. Yes. And so some things we got to learn to live with. Right. Exactly. And that's a good point. I'm glad you said that because a lot of times we think that um, that we will be healed of certain things. There may be times when we may have to live uh, with uh, certain um, um, maladies, certain mm -hmm. uh, things in life, paralysis or things, but but that does not mean that we cannot be healed from the mm -hmm. inside. Healing is not always physical. Mm -hmm. And so this is what I think the heart of the lesson is trying to get us to see. If Jesus does not heal our bodies, mm -hmm. if he heals our spirit man and our soul, then we still can be whole. Wholeness isn't always um, activities of our limbs. Mm -hmm. Sometimes uh, Jesus, or God withdraws that for a purpose or for a reason, but we still can be made whole and we still can, can uh, be able to function and be able to, to uh, do what God has called us to do with these certain uh, uh, physical limitations. Uh, limitations, exactly. And, and so um, if that is God's will, then we will be walking and healing. But if it's not his will, it, it's still, we have to come to terms with uh, um, wholeness and, and healing and, and, and realize that um, our ways are not his ways. And we don't always understand why things happen, uh, things happen the way they do, but they happen for a purpose and they happen to strengthen maybe not us, but maybe someone else. We don't know exactly what it is, but we can trust one thing. God will heal us and make us whole uh, spiritually as well as mentally, emotionally, and even physically. 
God is able to do that. At this time, we would like to close out in prayer. Deacon Terman, would you close us out, please? Let us bow our heads in more prayer. Father God, we thank you for this time we spend in your word. We thank you for the lesson, oh, Father God, presented by Sister Williams. We thank you for all that you've done, Father God. We ask you to bless those in the audience via Facebook, or YouTube, or whatever media possible, Father God. Bless those who make this presentation possible, Father God, the technicians and all that involved. Continue to bless every church door descends from your name. Bless us as a congregational Father God, and a missionary Baptist church. We love you. We thank you. Father God, make us whole. Where we can serve you with an unblemished heart, Father God. Make us whole where we can walk and talk the way Jesus did, oh, Father God. Make us whole that we can live a life more, more abundantly, Father God. Not about material things, Father God, but about spiritual things, Father God. We love you. We thank you for all that you've done. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. And thank you, our, our family and friends. We'd like you to we, uh, hear from you, your comments, your questions, your answers, anything that you have. We hope that you got something out of this lesson. God bless. Have a great day. Amen. We thank God for our teachers on today for breaking down that lesson. And I want to thank you for tuning in and being connected to us. Um, we want to share the principles of this lesson with others and share this video. I also want to thank you for your financial support. Your support has allowed Antioch Missionary Baptist Church to go forward, to sustain and to thrive. Even in the midst of all that we're going through, the gospel is going out because of your support. And so I want to thank you. And I want to extend the opportunity for you to give today. You can give your Sunday school offering and you can give to any initiative at Antioch through these variety of ways. You can go to our website, ambcchicago.org, click on the giving tab and you can give there. You can give through the Givelify app. Download that app from your app store, search for Antioch Missionary Baptist Church and you can give there. You can mail or drop off your donation to our church building, Antioch Missionary Baptist Church, 415 West Inglewood, Chicago, Illinois, 60621. You can also call the church number at 773-873-4433, and you can make arrangements for your gift to be picked up. And you can give through Zelle using the email address AntiochChurchChicago at gmail.com. Make sure you stay locked and set Antioch Live Live. It's coming up at 10 o'clock. We'll be broadcasting live from the sanctuary of the Antioch Missionary Baptist Church. Stay connected through our website. Reach out to us. We would love to reach back out to you and pray with you and connect. This is your digital pastor, Terrell Carter, and I'll talk to you real soon. <music>